You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. All right, welcome. We'll call the Board of Selectmen's meeting for August 16th, 2023 to order. Um, item one, to consider and if appropriate, approve the Board of Selectmen minutes of June 7th, 2023, July 11th, 2023, which was a special meeting. Motion to approve. Second. It's been moved, second for both those. Any edits, errors, corrections? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, I will just let those who are here in attendance, item eight will be removed from the agenda. Uh, Mike Infantino, the CMIST requested to withdraw they yes, withdraw their request. So uh, if you're here for number eight, we will not be considering that. However, if there's any other comments that somebody would like to make, they can make those under item 14. Okay, so item eight, we will not be taking under consideration. Uh, item two, uh, executive session to discuss pe pending tax appeals. Can I get a motion to go into executive session? So move. Second. Move second and we'll uh, invite in Attorney Perito. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Can I get a motion to go back into regular session? So moved. Second. Move second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. We are back in regular session. For the record, no votes were taken while in the executive session. Can I get a, a motion to approve the proposed settlement for 125 Johnson's Point Road? Motion to approve. Second. Move second. And all in favor say aye. 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 A motion to approve the proposed settlement for 4 Cottage Street. Motion so to move. Second. Ahead. Second. Move second. Yeah, Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 You said aye, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Pass unanimously. Uh, motion to approve the proposed settlement for 42 Squabrook Road. Motion to approve. Second. Move second. And discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Item passes. Item three to consider if appropriate approval request from town engineer John Hefferly to waive the bid for engineering services for Supply Ponds Bridge Project and award the contract to WMC Consultant Engineers in the amount of $150,500. John? Hello, everybody. So the request in front of you is for, um, is for Selectman Cosgrove, say the bid waiver for uh, the engineering services for the replacement of the bridge at Supply Ponds. It's um, a very small bridge. But as you're driving through, it's between the, the north and south ponds. Yep. That's where that bridge you roll over. Um, it's actually quite a deep bridge, it's about 20 feet to the bottom of the, the waterway there. But uh, we are requesting that the bid be waived for WMC Engineering. Uh, we did go through a pretty extensive um, RFQ process back in 2010 for the school ground bridge. Um, at that point, there were 26 responses to that RFQ. Um, there were, it was the former first selectman, Uncle Ross, uh, former public works director, Ed Masada, former town engineer, uh, Janice Plazak, and the former assistant town engineer, Lenny Reistetter, were um, reviewing those proposals, the qualifications, and, and chose uh, WMC as the highest at that point. Um, we moved that that project was completed and the Harbor Street Bridge uh, came about needing replacement. Um, WMC was also used for that through again a, a bid request waiver through the Board of Selectmen. Uh, this time again we're asking for the the waiver for them for this one we work with them. I personally work with them on the Harbor Street Bridge. They were very responsive to any questions. Um, they're very intimately uh, knowledgeable of the the state local bridge program which is what this bridge will be under. Um, we had no problems getting you know, through the state, getting state approvals, uh, materials. You know, it was a pretty smooth process all throughout. So 
Um, again, part of the reason why we're asking for this is, is that last request for qualifications process took about four and a half months to go through. Uh, we're trying to save some time on both rewriting basically the same request for qualifications that went out um, 10 plus years ago um, and trying to get this project moving faster than you know six months from now so and um, John were both those projects that you referenced that this consultant worked on were they both uh, local bridge programs uh, I believe the school ground road bridge was federal, federal local that's right. and then the, um, the Harbor Street was a state local um, I will just add that um, I was here when you went through the procurement process for uh, or the construction project for Harbor Street I came in during the uh, Construction for school ground road bridge, which you know they had some challenges, and uh, this firm was uh, um, did a very good job in terms of managing that and assisting the town, uh, not only through the design but also there were some change orders and things that took place through both those projects, in particular the school ground ground bridge project. So um, yeah, I mean no, I notably with there. the I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. But notably with the Harbor Street Bridge project, we there were no ineligible items under that uh, that program. So they they recognize again that you know throughout the whole construction process, this doesn't cover construction administration. It's you know through bidding, um, but they're very knowledgeable in, in what they're doing. And the local bridge project, we get, you know, as mentioned, the letter fifty percent coverage. Correct. Questions? No, I, uh, sure. I, I kind of touched base yesterday with someone at Town Hall. M my concern is is that this was bid the last time, 13 years ago, or 12 years ago. At what point in time do we start going out and giving somebody else the opportunity? I mean, I know there's a comfort level. I get it. Um, I know you want to do this timely. I guess, um, but. We're preventing other people from getting the opportunity to also, you know, work with the town. And at what point in time do we go out and, and try to do this? Or is it always going to be, and it's not on you because obviously it started way before you, but are we going to use this company for this type of stuff forever? I mean, when, where does it stop? Where do we give someone else a try? And, and it's not just this. There's many other things we do similar to that. But, you know, you don't want to hold up something, but at some point in time, Time passes and other people should have the opportunity to get into the game if they're qualified. Yeah, I think that's the qualified is the biggest term here is that, you know, if we say we went through the RFQ process again, we, we likely they would come back in again. Along with, again, there was surprisingly there were again 26 um, respondents and only I think six were interviewed at that point. Um, but that's not giving us price. We can't we can't get a price until you go through that qualifications, you select somebody, and then you know, then you negotiate the price in that respect. And we've, we've already gone back and forth with, um, with WMC on, on their pricing and trying to figure out, because this is a, you know, it is more, the cost for this bridge is more than what the Harbor Street services were uh, through design. But there's, the program's also changed substantially where there's a lot more design work on their end as opposed to a lot of it got pushed on to the contractor. Um, but, you know, if we, we go out, we're, we're getting the same qualifications back that we did before, more or less, right? I mean, you might have, like, another 10 years of experience, but, but we're, not, we're not able to really compare, you know, apples to apples on pricing. That's the big Well, it's difference. an unknown until you send out an RFP, right? It would be until an RFQ. Until you send out? It would be the RFQ for qualifications, okay. and then we yeah. wouldn't know pricing until we, we choose somebody. Right, and which is the yeah. normal process. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm not going to vote against it, but I'm uncomfortable with the fact we keep going back to the same companies without giving someone else a try. I mean, I know the bridge has to get fixed. I get it. Um, and, and again, you didn't start this trend, but I think we got to find a way to get out of the trend. That's all I have. Well, I would just also add the town has undertaken a number of projects, and we've gone through, uh, you know, the, I don't want to be clear, and I know you, yeah, you know this, know. but for the, the uh, public that there are a number of firms that work with the town of Brantford. It's not, you know, limited in terms of, I think with this is a very specific and like task that has been done 
now the third time. I don't think it's necessarily a, a sole uh, firm that's doing the work for the town of Brayford. I think it's related to the scope of work, which is a bridge program, a bridge replacement. And as stated by the engineer, we evaluate qualifications based on our experience with this firm where we went through, yes, it was, I agree with you, uh, Selectman Dunbar, a number of years ago, but it was two bridge projects ago in terms of how long it takes to do these projects. And um, this firm, uh, through under a previous administration, was selected as the most qualified at that time. Uh, since that uh, pr process, they've completed two bridges for the town of Branford, which uh, even through a change of administration, a change of staff, uh, you know, that have uh, positive results working with this firm. So I think that in itself kind of speaks to the firm and, and a justification to do a third bridge, a third project with this specific firm. So I'd be, in, you know, that's why I'm in favor. So any further discussion? All right. Motion to approve. Second. Move second. And all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Item four, to consider an appropriate approval request from Thomas Mahoney, fire chief, to waive the bid for the renovation and remounting of an existing ambulance onto a new 2024 Ford E450 and award the contract to Eastford Fire and Rescue Sales Incorporated in the amount of $237,763. Chief? Thank you. Um, as you know, the um, last time we did a remount, um, uh, it saved us approximately $100,000 from a new unit. Um, we essentially get almost a brand new unit. They, um, rip the box down, a new electrical, um, new lighting, that, that sort of thing, um, cushions, hinges, anything that's amiss in the box, remount it onto a new cabin chassis and essentially we get a new ambulance. But the process of remounting is, um, is a good uh, affordable way to keep the, uh, you know, the investment continuing. Um, Eastford Fire Rescue is, there's very few companies that do the remounts. Um, there's even less that we trust. Eastford has, um, we've been working with them for, for a number of years now. Um, they've produced a good product, and most importantly, when something um, has gone wrong, even if it's been out of warranty, they've stood by it and taken care of it for us. So um, I'm requesting that you approve um, the bid waiver to award it to Eastford Fire Rescue in the amount of $237,763. Uh, All right. Motion to approve. Get on the floor. Yes, um, I make motion to approve. But first, uh, Chief, would you be kind enough just for the public to introduce so this go. young man? Oh yes, this is Brian Kozak, my assistant chief. Um, I think this is probably the first time Brian. I, I believe so. It's the first time we're seeing him officially. Thank you. Welcome aboard. You know that. Thank you. Motion to approve. Very seconded. Uh, any any further? No. This is basically the other part of this is too is that. All the ambulances are set up the same, and this is to keep continuity also. Yeah, um, so we, the, in the past when we have purchased new ambulances, um, we've purchased the better quality boxes so that we can pass them on. We're just really doing the, the chassis over. Um, but it is, uh, it is a process that we, we haven't, you know, we did one with a different company that did not come out very well. So, you know, we want to stick with what we know. Thanks. All right, just one quick question. Any issues getting this uh, vehicle? No. Uh, no. Uh, just no. Yeah, no, we have. Um, yeah. Right. We All have. right, it's been moved, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Item five, to consider an appropriate approval request from Thomas Mahoney, fire chief, to waive the bid for the purchase of a new life pack 15 V4 cardiac monitor defibrillator and the requirement for advertising for the sale of a life pack 15 cardiac monitor the defibrillator and allow the chief to trade in, it in toward the purchase of a new life pack 15 cardiac monitor defibrillator and to award the contract to Stryker Medical in the amount of $37,931.33. Motion to approve. Second. Move second. Any discussion? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thank you.
Item Thank six, you. to consider and appropriate approve a request from the Solid Waste Management Commission to approve a new fee schedule for the disposal of various items. Tyler. Hi everyone. Hello. Tyler Brown, Sustainability and Compliance. So I worked with the Solid Waste Management Commission on these prices. We found that the prices haven't been updated in over a decade, so that was how this started. Um, two of the more focused on prices that we looked at were the garbage or rubbish and the single stream recycling. Mm -hmm. And then another large one would be demolition debris. We wanted to make it where we were at least covering our true costs to the town. So that's why you'll see part of it, it's talking about true costs. And then uh, some of the other ones were deemed to be uh, put above market price. And the market was where mainly we looked at Zero Road, which is uh, the closest to us, and CWPM. Motion to approve. Second. Move, second. Any further discussion? Questions? Mm. Yeah. Um, Tyler, uh, sorry. Hi. Hi. Representative Tracy Everson, 5th District. Um, mm -hmm. Does this impact the new contract at all that was agreed to, or is this? No, so for the public, this is just for contractor prices. So if a contractor was coming to the transfer station, these are the prices that they would pay. It has nothing to do with town contracts, and this also has nothing to do with uh, resident stickers at all. Okay, and we don't get anything for the scrap metal? Uh, scrap is $0 cost. We get a revenue, so we okay. actually get 75% of the market price. Great. Yep. Thank so you. Th these would be the fees that we would ch charge. Uh, charge outside right. contract right. to it. utilize our transfer station. Thank you. All right. all right. It's been moved, seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing on all in favor, say aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Uh, item 7, to consider and if appropriate, approve the installation of a Free little library next to the Trinity Episcopal Church. Um, this is a, an Eagle Scout project. Mm. Uh, it did circulate to all the other um, organizations that are required to. I don't believe we heard officially back from the academy on the green, um, but they had um, we spoke to the chairman. They had not met. It, this little free library is directly in front of Trinity Church. I don't see. Um, how it would uh, pose any burden on, on their operations. So I brought this forward for approval. Make a motion to approve. Second. Move, second. And any further discussion? Hearing on all in favor say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Uh, item nine, green use. To consider and if appropriate, approve a request from Trinity Episcopal Church for the use of the town green on October 12th. 2023 at 6 p.m. to hold a vigil service in recognition of the 25th anniversary of Matthew Shepard's death. Motion to approve. Second. Move second. All in favor say aye. 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 To consider if appropriate approval request from the VFW post 12106 for the use of the town green on September 15, 2023 to hold a POW MIA ceremony. Motion to approve. Second. Move and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, item 10, to consider and if appropriate, approve a request from Stony Creek Association for the use of Madeira Park on Sundays from June 20, 2024 through October 2024 from 10 a.m. through 2 p.m. to hold farmer's markets. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing on all in favor say aye. 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 Item 11, to consider and if appropriate, approve a request from Terry Eaton for the use of the town property between number seven and number nine, Park Memorial Drive and allow for an exemption as permitted by section 115-4 of the code of the town of Brantford regarding the consumption of alcoholic beverages in a public area and allow the alcoholic beverages to be served at a wedding and reception scheduled for September 8th, 2023. Motion to approve. Second. Move second. Any discussion? Hearing on all fair say aye. 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 Um, <coughs> Item 12, to consider and if appropriate, waive the requirement for the advertising and the sale of town property and donate the town's former staging system to the Stony Creek Association. Motion to approve. Second. Move second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, item passes. Um, 
Item 13, correspondence. Uh, oh. Do you have a copy of it? I don't have it. Which one? Oh, one under here. I, I have it now. Back. Yeah, it's far in the back. Yep. I might have read it on it. Okay. Uh, this is from uh, Robert Massey, Chairman of the Board of Fire Commissioners. Dear Honorable Board Members, this letter is to inform you that on June 22nd, 2023, the Board of Fire Commissioners voted unanimously to endorse the Fire Department Staffing Plan. Specifically, the Board supports Option 1 to create an EMS-only job classification within the Department staffed by non-firefighting EMT basics as outlined in the plan. Call volume has steadily increased, driven mainly by emergency medical incidents. The frequency and length of these incident types often leaves us solely reliant upon the volunteer companies. Four of the five engine companies are staffed by volunteers. Despite recruitment and retention efforts that include following recommended best practices, we continue to lose volunteers faster than we can replace them. Since 1996, three volunteer companies and the Volunteer Rescue Squad have closed due to the declining membership. Brantford is not alone in this trend. It is a statewide and national problem. Volunteer membership has dropped so significantly that in the most instances, we can only rely on a single volunteer company by combining the available members of all four companies. To supplement our lack of resources, we've added automatic mutual aid assistance from the town of East Haven. However, this comes with the quid pro quo of having to send our limited resources out of town to provide the same service to the town of East Haven. Two additional issues exacerbate the problem. First, residential and commercial development already underway with more proposed have added even more pressure to an already overburdened system. The second is a deployment problem. Our resources are strategically deployed at multiple stations to meet the recognized standard of an engine company on a scene within four minutes. Unreliable staffing at these volunteer locations prohibits us from achieving this response time goal and creates an inequity of service for parts of the town previously protected by volunteer staff. Therefore, it is imperative that we begin a process of adding and staffing additional stations. Our community has outgrown its fire department and action is required to match our resources and allow the department to continue to provide the highest level of service to our community. I have attached a copy of the staffing plan for review by the board members and will formally present the plan to your committees in the coming months for formal consideration. Please feel free to contact me or Fire Chief Mahoney with any questions or concerns you may have. Thank you for your consideration. Sincerely, Robert J. Massey, Jr., Chairman, Board of Fire Commissioners. I believe for the public, the plan may also be available on the fire department website. Um, and I believe a presentation will also be made um, at a, probably not in uh, this fall to the Board of Finance as well. Um, dear Board, this is from Attorney uh, John A. Corona. Uh, dear Board members, our firm represents Cameron Brown Jr. in his capacity as a member of the Treasure Island LLC. Treasure Island owns a home on Pot Island near the property of Grace Island Development LLC. Mr. Brown has repeatedly expressed to town officials his deep concerns about activities occurring and planned for the Grace Island property. Grace Island Development's website is marketing the property as a wedding, vacation, special event venue and retreat center for groups numbering up to 250. These large scale events pose serious threats to public safety and security and to the quality of life of the surrounding owners. The town's zoning enforcement officer has informed Mr. Brown that the single family home is not going to be used as a hotel while simultaneously asserting her opinion that use of the property as a hotel is a pre-existing use which does not expire. It appears the town's position is that Grace Island Development can commence operation of a hotel at will. Mr. Brown's research shows that the hotel was constructed in 1845 
any use of the property as a hotel ended in the Great Depression. Thereafter, the property was dedicated exclusively to the use as a resident, it, residence and was part of an organized residential community. Consequently, there was no use as a hotel occurring at the advent of the Branford Zoning Section 81B of the Branford Zoning Regulations uh, is inapplicable. Mr. Brown realizes that the Board of Selectmen is not the town's land use authority. The consequences of allowing a hotel, mass gatherings, and other non-residential uses of, at the property will have far-reaching consequences for the town and will tax public safety, public utilities, public transportation, and many other town resources. Your board is the only public authority with the ability to bring together all boards, commissions, officials, and concerned citizens to conduct a constructive discussion of this important topic. Please contact me if further information is needed. Mr. Brown greatly appreciates your patience and assistance um, for the board and for the public. I really did have a conversation uh, with uh, the zoning enforcement officer. I had followed up with the town attorney. I do think there is something that truly needs to be investigated in terms of this the, the level of use and the use, and uh, which requires not only a review of our current regulations, when those regulations were adopted, but state statute as well. So um, I will inform the board of any progress on that. Um, and I don't know if anyone has any other questions or comments. Um, all right, item 14, other business. Any other business? If if uh, there's public con sure yeah I'm sorry you have to come up for the to the microphone. I'm 88. But <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Just, um, uh, just, <laughs> I'll, I'll be left. It, it's just a concern of mine. I, sure. I've been coming down here 88 years now uh, to the Thimble Islands, and the parking is atrocious at times. Sometimes, a few times, I had to park all the way down to Prospect Hill. And it's just a concern, and I'm not sure whether they can do anything about it or whatever, but it is just a concern of mine. Sure. And I'm just going to put it out there. Yeah. So, any other? Uh, well, I think the parking concern is a little overblown. I've been coming to the island since the 70s. You know, we complained about that. Parking. It's been the same thing for 50 years. So I think. Having three tour boats, I think, is important to the creek. I live in the creek year round. I have a small business there. We employ a dozen young people. For many of them, it's their first job. I think the first job is an important part of a young person's development. And so I think we shouldn't be automatically naysaying anything for somebody to do a business like what Mike is doing. Now, I understand he withdrew it, and I did see the Bosonga in the water today. It's the first time I've seen it in two years. Last time I saw it. It was in the water for a day or two, and then I hadn't seen it for two years. So if the Bosunga is going to be in the water and running, then that's three tour boats, and that's fine. But if the Bosunga doesn't again, and Mike comes back in the spring and says, hey, I'd like to take the third spot, I'm in favor of that spot. I think we should let him do it. He's running a small business. Uh, there's other merchants in the creek. they are little mom and pop businesses. They could use the business. So that's what I had to say. All right. Thank you. Do you want people to state names? Yeah. <laughs> if you might, mind, before you make your comments, state your name for the record. Oh, uh, so, John And uh, Richard Peck. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure, I hate to do this, but I know any second, Henry's going to come in and ask you to speak in the microphone. <laughs> if you don't mind, if you have anything to say, if you just mind sitting up at the table here so the, the audience can hear you. So we'll go right down. Just step right on up, if you don't mind. Do you mind coming we'll up to the microphone? Right You're good. Oh, okay. I mean, unless you has a, yeah, Tracy, do you mind? And then whoever wants to speak after, if you just want to go right in. Thank you. Representative Tracy Everson, 23 Mill Creek Road, um, also a Governor's Island resident. Uh, the concern is, um, the vessel was custom built prior to the captain being given permission to use the Stony Creek dock and based on the town dock ordinance, this vessel has utilized the dock without the proper permission 
since it started operating in June. This request is being heard in mid-August. We thought it was going to be until moments before this meeting, um, nearly at the end of the season. The letter itself is dated mid-July. So has the town issued any violation notices? No. Does the town intend to? No. Does anyone monitor that doc? Um, as you know, we have a doc master, and we know that enforcing and monitoring those uh, the tie-ups at the, the dock, um, as well as the floating docks, has been an issue probably as long as parking has been an issue. Yes. So this new vessel, according to the town dock ordinance, requires a public hearing before it's being granted a permit. Mm -hmm. That's contrary to what the captain of the vessel who's proposed this is stating. So is there going to be a clarification as to uh, is this adding a fourth vessel? No. So the um, as what was on the agenda was to have a discussion regarding this and exact wording wasn't to take action if we were if the board elected to consider uh, a, um, another vessel because as you you're aware the ordinance spells out the three the three uh, yes. vessels that operate there we would then set up a public hearing given the fact that the CMS withdrew. Uh, their request I don't see that there's a need to have a public hearing and from his letter and statement that he found another location on the Bradford River I believe uh, to operate and has been operating out of the Bradford River okay. so we will not be have there's not not a need because they're not an ask okay all right so it remains to be seen whether or not it it shows up at one of the docks in the creek then again um, the concern, of course, about parking is if this vessel did operate in Stony Creek, it carries apparently 29 people. The sea mist carries 40 people. They often go out at night at the same time or around the same time. So that's at least another 50 cars. Uh, is there consideration of where those cars will park? Is there a, is Are you there saying a if there was another to add another? Yes. Well, we're not adding another. So, uh, so um, you have the three tour boats that, per ordinance, are allowed to operate and utilize the town dock. Um, we are not uh, amending or changing from the three existing tour boats. The one that Polsonga has not been in the water for the last uh, couple seasons. Um, but I believe, as I heard today, it was going to it is in the water. Um, I believe they had their survey done, and they are waiting for some final paperwork, and they will then commence tour. To so in terms of um, added uh, tours, it is we're going back to what was historically there when the ordinance was created, and over the, you know absent these last last season season and a half right so the um stony creek town pier facilities bylaws enacted in 1974 by the board of selectmen it's an eight and a half by 11 laminated sheet on one of the pilings mm -hmm. um I, I think it would be beneficial for people to be able to see that in much larger print because there's often kids that jump off that dock. I mean, it's a, a liability concern, I think, for the town. There's a lot of people that crowd down there. There are commercial vehicles that have been shown to offload, you know, take up all these spaces, park on the town dock, which is prohibited by this actual town pier facilities bylaws. Yeah. Is that something the town would consider? Yeah, I mean, as I said, the the a lot. You, I mean, listen. I think we can do a a, a larger sign. Uh, the enforcement of that is really what's ne necessary, or what would be required. You can, you know, somebody can read it uh, and, and still 
continue that activity. I think what we have to do is really try to, and we are looking at, is kind of trying to strike a balance. Uh, the, the dock serves a critical function to the operation, not only businesses, but serving many residents, right, out in the islands, as you well know. Um, so, you know, certainly, and I know, you know, this season, and I've received some letters from yourself, but others have maybe aware about the amount of activity that's uh, occurring. Um, and, and again, I think that may be, you know, kind of ebbs and flows, what happens and, and also who's, who's, who's going down there and operating, uh, you know, maybe not understanding the, what it, the amount of volume that is occurs down there at ter peak times. So that then all of a sudden uh, compounds into a greater issue than, than, than needs to be, right? So somebody's unloading, loading. Uh, I think it does play, and I think we all can agree, it does play an important part. Um, you know, in terms of managing that traffic flow, I think that's something that needs to have really some further uh, consideration before you know, we say, well, we're going to not allow something or it's going to have something happen. I think there needs to be a, a realization that certain levels of activity need to continue to, and levels of service need to continue to exist, not only for, you know, for the, the, the public, for the businesses um, in, that are directly being served, but as one individual just said, there's, there's a small little uh, cluster of economy down there that requires on a certain flow of, of commerce. Right. Yeah, well, the, the bylaws also um, prohibit the use, really, of it's supposed to be for recreational uses, to provide for the maximum safety usage and availability and usage of public facilities at the town pier and floats. So um, I, I think it's probably time for the town to take a closer look because that area continues to get even more congested. Pedestrians walk in roadways with vehicle traffic. People are loading, unloading, driving up on the dock, which isn't permitted. The dock master is there, nothing is said. The police could also be called, not that we need the police to come down and do those kinds of jobs, but um, it's, it's getting out of control. So, thank you. Okay, thanks. How you guys doing? Good. I'm John Tower. Uh, I am a resident at 50 Walls Road in, uh, in Brantford, and uh, I've been uh, going out to Governor's Island since I was about five. And um, I'm just here. I'm, I'm an attorney, but I don't practice in this area. Uh, but I wanted to say something really important to you guys. I understand that Mr. Infantino's request to lease or rent that dock space has been withdrawn. And so you might just say, well, this issue is now moot, and we really don't need to consider it. But his letter is actually something, it reveals something very important. It reveals his interpretation of your ordinance. And what he's trying to say is that he has multiple points of embarkation, that he operates out of the Brantford River or other docks around Stony Creek or Brantford or Guilford, and, and hence he's not a Stony Creek tour boat. That is, under your ordinance, is just not correct. He has operated his boat throughout this year as a fourth tour boat. It's because his passengers are embarking from Stony Creek. And under the ordinance itself, the infraction standard, it's triggered by when you pick up passengers that are embarking from Stony Creek. The, the, the exact language of the ordinance is being violated every day. And it's, it's been happening steadily since the start of June. That boat, Island Time, which are now being told is not a Stony Creek tour boat, is in square violation of your ordinances. And I understand um, uh, he says it's not, but how he says it's not is based upon a rather self-serving interpretation. And it's important for you as a board, and you're the, you're the sole interpreter of this ordinance, I would hope that you would interpret it according to the letter of the ordinance. And when you have a point of embarkation of the passengers from Stony Creek, you got a violation. So what you have is a, is a de facto fourth tour boat. This fourth tour boat 
is operating without a license, without a public hearing, and on top of that, it's operated by an incumbent, somebody already has a license. It's the principle of CMIST. You have a letter signed by Mr. Infantino as a member of the CMIST LLC. He's operating on time. If there's anybody that deserved a fourth vote, it's not an existing proprietor. If you want to open up to a fourth license, you should be fair. How do you be fair? A fair process, if you want to open up a fourth license, is to have a public process, a public bidding process, where people propose bids with performance criteria and maybe even monies they pay to your town for a fourth license. But that didn't happen. Rather, an existing business is presented the town with a fait accompli. A fait accompli meaning a done deal. Mm -hmm. They presented a boat. They got a boat and they started operating it. I don't care what he says is his point of embarkation, where he says his mooring is. The question under your ordinance is where is his passenger is embarking from? And I, I, this is important to us because every, every, every day I try to use the island, I, I have to go to the docks. We can't get to the docks. We can't drive to the docks. I have to heft my gas and my propane from the end of Buena Vista Road, where my fellow neighbors don't want me to be parking because I can't find parking on the street. Or I have to go back to 50 Wallace. And if you, if you want to carry a, a six gallon gas tank that far, it's not fun. My point is, it, the point made about traffic at Stony Creek, I've been coming for over about 55 years. That, that is bizarre. The proportion of traffic in our creek, in our beloved town, is proportionally increasing every year since the pandemic is just ramping up. Uh, that comment was not factually accurate. My, my observation is, you're right now, from Thimbleberry on to the, to the summer house, it's basically a pedestrian corridor. It's like a boulevard. You can't drive that without endangering a six-year-old darting out from the, the streets. It's, it's a crisis waiting to happen. I do not want to sit before you guys after a six-year-old who darts out between those cars you know, being chased by her parents gets hit by one of these contractor um, pickup trucks. And the issue of the island time is not at fault for that traffic. I would encourage you guys to get ahead of this problem. And how I would ask you to do it is to uh, just straight up. I believe you as a board should articulate a concern to your town attorney to consider the ordinance and, and talk about it with you in a privileged setting and if it's true what I say, which is that island time is picking up passengers that park in Stony Creek. He admitted it in the letter. Excuse me? He admitted it in the letter. He admitted the letter. It's a straight up violation. And you should write a letter to island time, which is being operated by CMIST LLC, and say, hey, you got to stop. Because if you, if you keep going, you're going to get a $90 infraction um, you, you know, uh, for each time you do it. He's operated, I mean, a thousand passengers since June. Uh, that's that's a $90,000 per passenger infraction. I'm not asking you to impose an infraction, not at all. Another quick thing you could do to get ahead of your problem is, I actually think this board should consider doing a traffic study. Like, have you guys had some vehicle counts for Stony Creek? Vehicle counts, historically, if you did those rubber, you know, rub rails that, you know, passenger their cars or travel over, if you did that, it would prove my point. Traffic is overwhelming the creek really fast. And, uh, and um, these boats are a big part of the equation because you have parties making reservations for 40 people coming in from New Jersey, Norwich, Waterbury, wherever, and having a nice time, but in the process, overwhelming our infrastructure and um, uh, imposing a, a public safety problem. Uh, I really appreciate your time listening to me, and uh, I hope you take this, this uh, issue seriously as a public safety uh, issue that it is, and a square up legal violation by uh, the operators of Island Time. Thanks again. Thanks. Anyone else? Any other comments? All right, motion to adjourn.
Motion to adjourn. Second. Move second. All in favor say aye. 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 This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.